Hey guys, what's up? Um, welcome back to Craven Raven. I hope y'all are Craven Raven. <laughs> no. Oh, but speaking of craving something, I'm going to pop a picture of the shrimp and grits I made this morning because they were so good. They were so good. Yes, I have two like jumbo shrimp in there and only two because I like shrimp but not not enough to have like a bunch in there and I don't know you know if that's weird but it's the truth it is the truth but welcome back <laughs> welcome back to the channel um this is video number two woohoo um this video is going to be dedicated to a painting titled I don't think we're alone that I did in 2022 during my like last semester at SAIC and um, I'm excited to talk about this painting. I do first want to say thank y'all for voting on it last week because now I not only have the next video, you know, lined up, but like a whole little lineup of the paintings that I'll be talking about. So thank y'all, y'all are great. Also, thanks for showing me that you guys are like still interested in certain paintings or that like, they're clearly sticking with you guys. They're leaving like a long um, lasting impression, some of the paintings. And I'm just really grateful to see the feedback that you guys give me. You guys are the best, for real, for real. Let's get into this start and finish process because when I tell you this painting almost took me out. It almost took me out. But I mean, it didn't almost take me out like my fashion construction class did so you know we're gonna give it that but it most definitely was probably the most like intense painting that I did from start to finish but it was so worth it so worth it um I say I wouldn't do it again but honestly I do I'll do a whole bunch for the arts a whole lot so you know but yeah um the concept this piece was first off inspired by this painting that I saw um it was concave within a wall and I really didn't see it in person I actually only saw a picture of it and I sadly don't even know who the artist is but you know I mean, I'm kind of sad just because I can't really give credit where credit's due so you know but it was someone from SAIC clearly because it was within a BFA show and some from someone from SAIC posted it but they never said the name and I can't even remember who posted it. So someone please, if you guys know who the artist is, let me know so I can shout them out for real because they most definitely inspired this piece. Um, but this is the picture of their art. Um, it's over there. It was concave within a wall, um, pretty much like abstract. Like I think it was kind of burnt, burnt orange maybe in color. But it was a pretty cool concept. Um, I thought that the use of space, like the wall space was really unique and something that I had never seen done before, before that time. And I was just like, wow, um, how can I do something that's just as cool? And how can I make it a scene? Because right now I'm so focused on these cinematic scenes. Um, but how do I really make this like work for me or even like, how do I make it my own? And the first thought was just like, okay, well then go the other way, you know? go convex don't go concave go convex and you know it actually probably would have been a lot easier for me to go concave which I figured out in a later painting that I did but you know I was committed and I was gonna make it happen so you know I had the concept um I started drawing some sketches I'll post some of these sketches but the general idea was that I was gonna do two large I thought there were going to be canvases like stretch canvases at the time with some bevel edges so that they could meet perfectly at a um, right angle I um, ended up making some wooden panels instead of the canvases because I think the concept of me trying to stretch like canvas over a weird edge like that and it meeting perfectly was starting to be a, um, an issue but um you know the concept was truly just coming from me wanting to make these this picture go around the corner and I just thought okay if someone's going to go all the way around a corner to experience a piece how are they going to um, how are they going to truly experience it like 
if they're walking around the corner, they're not going to see both sides of the painting at the same time. They're going to first see something and then go around the corner and see another thing. And I was like, wow, um, I think this should be something very suspenseful. Um, it should be like drama, high drama, high intensity, like, you know, someone going around the corner, creaking around the corner, what could that be? And the first thought was like, maybe it's like someone's intruding on someone's house. Um, maybe someone's hiding. I couldn't tell if it was going to be like a horror themed one because it first was going to be like scary, like very scary. Um, but then I just thought, you know, why not just make this like a little thriller? Um, and the concept started becoming more of a split screen situation where two scenes like in cinematography where they split the screen of a, um, you know, of the movie screen, but you're seeing into one room and then seeing into another and maybe two separate things are happening that are very unrelated or they could be related but they're on two separate sides of the wall and the panel or the like split part of the screen is supposed to represent that wall that dividing wall so i decided um you know the first thing i need to do here is to try to make these panels and then start to plan this photo shoot at the same time because you know it was just a lot to do and this was me trying to execute this all within um, the span of my advanced painting studio and I and that starts to be a little complicated because it's a lot easier for me to already have taken the photo shoots but come to like you know that class prepared to be able to um, execute the work versus me actually being within a class space and then having to execute um, making the surface prepping the surface and then also taking the shoot getting everyone scheduled together getting you know everything from start to finish happening in a very small amount of time that's reasonable for teachers to be kind of like are you even making progress so you know so yeah so um then i went to the wood shop and i started pitching them my idea in terms of how i was going to create this and i talked to like three different people and i remember you know them telling me oh okay this is um this can happen and then towards the end of my um you know wood shop experience i was paired with this last lady who realized that the panel that we had created the larger one was too large to fit on the table by the time that we needed to cut the double edge and it started becoming a little complicated to cut it um or in her opinion very unsafe and so um, it was a it was a risk, most definitely a very big risk, um, trying to get that one cut the way that it was. And honestly, if it wasn't cut perfectly that first time, I would have wasted a lot of time and the concept wouldn't have ever worked. But it worked, and I was so grateful for that. During that same time, I remember t me and my friend from school were like moving these these panels, and I made them out of all wood. Like they're just all wood. They have like MDF and like some wood and they're heavy they are so heavy like heavy with no paint and no extra material on it just heavy as hell and we're like strolling these big ass you know panels down the damn street trying to get it to this next building where my studio is at it's like it's so much it's cold it's just so much going on it's loud you know um and so you know we finally get into my studio and then i go to um like put it on the wall i remember one of them fell i kind of like chipped the edge i was like oh fuck i like i chipped one of the bevel edges i had to like repair that I was like, this is so complicated but um we finally got into the into the studio so i started like basing them in a bunch of gesso you know a bunch of layers i'm using my perfect little hack my little squeegee but like shout out to my teacher who suggested that i just go get like a, a shower squeegee to like cover large surfaces and gesso very quickly and very smoothly where I don't really have to like sand that much because there's not a lot of brush strokes. I was like, oh, you're, you're that, you're that dude. Um, so that saved me a lot of time. And then that weekend after I had like finally completed these, um, these panels, I finally was doing the photo shoot and I did the photo shoot with me, my best friend, Summer, my friend, Yash, and another dude. Um, and we ended up going to this place that was um, my mom's customer's 
like it was like a not an apartment but kind of an apartment like my mom had this customer who had a photo like photography studio or something but he had decorated the upper he owns this building and he decorated the upper like apartment level as like an apartment for someone to be able to like inhabit but he had decorated it in a way where it wasn't like a very simple commercial space it was like decked out like one room was all purple with these like velvet purple couches and all these like or this artwork and these nice mirrors and like very ex kind of like you know kind of extravagant rooms but rooms that weren't like oh you can easily transform this into your space type of situation but he just never really put it up for like a list or ever was renting it out to anyone so he did all this like really nice decorating work and just it was just sitting and no one was ever inhabiting it and he was like oh well you can check it out to see if it's like gonna work for your shoot and I was like yeah let me check it out because in my head I just thought my house isn't gonna work for this like it's just not gonna give me what I need so I'm not gonna have enough space to really you know step back and take the proper photo that I need to with this split screen situation so I was like okay um let me check this space out and when I did check it out it was it was pretty nice it was like done and I was like oh I can see how I can transform this space to fit what I needed to fit and the fact that the one room where the quote-unquote burglars were at was like painted purple and the room that me and summer were in was like orange that contrast was so high and i had already had the concept to um paint that purple room in a very like dark on dark um very muted tonal range but like deeper tonal ranges because i kind of wanted to um I kind of wanted it to look like one of Harry James Marshall's black on black paintings that I remember seeing and they're so dark that they're really hard to take pictures of like it's hard to kind of capture all the things that are happening in those pictures but they work really nice in person because it's almost like your eyes are adjusting to the dark where you can kind of see and make out what's happening in the space and I just was like oh this would be really cool if we could only get like mostly the glimmer of maybe a flashlight or like maybe the light that's coming from our room like me and summer's room and not that main room so after we did the photo shoot um i just remember like the costumes were pretty easy i mean not this isn't after this is more so actually during or before costumes were really easy i just told the men to wear all black and i kind of bought some ski mask and whatever and then um i remember yaj brought a prop gun because my pistols weren't looking gun enough and then um i me and summer were dressed in like lounging wear or like almost like sleepwear because you know the scene started to become these girls are hiding out in this space like in their house maybe and these dudes are breaking in to the house you know and they're hearing it and reacting to it on the other side but it's almost giving you you know it's giving the viewer the the perspective where they can kind of see what's happening before each party can see what's happening you know the suspense of you know the girls hearing the stuff in the room but they're clearly hearing it and reacting and these guys are in this other room just getting things but not necessarily aware that these girls are in this room um and that one has a bat and is about to like smash him for real um <laughs> but yeah so then I started finally after getting the photo shoot and like editing those pictures finally I got to start painting on it and I remember just wanting so quickly to just cover the surface of that just cover it all but there was so many layers of paint that needed to be put on the um the panels that I was so unsatisfied with the first few you know paint strokes that I was creating I was like this is not it this color ain't it it's not dark enough I can't I don't want to wait till it dries like I just I was like can we hurry this up and then um you know as I was like progressing on it I had to start thinking about what are the things that I'm going to start switching out as um this is a part of the distraction series so 
is there something that's wonky in here like what could be switched out and at a point in time i remember talking about maybe we could switch out the the bat with like a baguette someone said that maybe summer said that but like you know maybe a piece of bread could be what i'm actually about to whack them in the head with or um maybe there's something i could hide in the in the darker room but it just seemed like in the orange room there wasn't too much that we could switch out or add so i just I just was like, you know what, let me see what I can hide in this dark space that might take people a little bit of time to find. And um, it started with the cat eyes that are in the back of the room that are like peering at the, the men robbing. Then there is, um, there is a spider that's hanging from the top um, that's kind of hard to see. And then there are ghostly hands in the mirror um, or like hand prints that are happening within the mirror that's um, by one of the robber's heads. And then there are plastic flies that are like placed everywhere throughout the painting on the orange side and on the dark blue side. So do these objects have any significance? Like do they mean anything? Absolutely not. They're just things like Easter eggs for people to go and find. But um, it most definitely took people a while to find all of the things because there is technically so much hidden um, and if you're unaware to look for it, you might never find it, you know? Um, so after painting it and adding all those objects, I remember, well, actually I didn't finish it. This is where, um, I was trying to decide if I was going to actually have it in the BFA show of my, um, of SAIC of my college, because it was not finished and it wasn't even close to completion when I was having my lasting critique right before... Um, space claim it's like when you have to go into a, like a little lottery system and pick the ideal space for your artwork or the work that you want to exhibit for that show um, you have to pick the space and you know it, it's like a little fighting not a fight situation but it is a, a little lottery and so I just remember um, during my last critique I showed the Western one that you guys could have seen before but I haven't made a video about it but I showed the western one um oh shoot where did I put the bullets and I showed um the in progress I don't think we're alone and the response that I was getting from the in progress I don't think we're alone was something I don't think I ever experienced like people truly like walking around the space like wanting to step back get really close and people just this was like the one time that people truly just didn't have a critique and they were just so like in awe about the experience they were having and how cool it was and how executed like how um how it was executed well and I was just like wow like this is crazy but it wasn't close to done and I was starting to get worried because they were like oh if you're gonna show something you better show this and I'm like do you see the lack of paint that's on here? Like it, it's close, but the amount of finishing that I need to do is insane. Like it's insane. And I had already been really burnt out by the fact that the time that I really spent making the um, panels was so much. Like it took over two weeks or no, it took about two weeks to make those panels. But I had to keep like going back and forth and lugging the stuff on my own. And I'm not big. I am a little girl well, I'm not a little girl but I am a little person at least and stuff is heavy and I was tired I was like oh like oh my gosh you're gonna make me lug this one to the show like me I was like gosh and not damage it <laughs> like oh my gosh but you know I just remember like really just staying and staying and staying at the studio like the, I even think the day before I need to needed to install it um, at the actual show, I remember like still working on it that night. And I don't think I left that studio until like 11 p.m. And my mom was just like waiting on me. And I was just like, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. She was like, okay, all right. And so, um, yeah, I was just, I was just working and working and cranking it out. And I remember... First off, taking so long to finish the table. Like there's a table in the in the dark scene that I just wouldn't touch. Like it was just a blob for a very long time. 
And I knew there was a table there, but I really didn't feel like laying it out. I don't know what that was about, but I just wasn't interested in it. And I just remember, like, just prolonging it and prolonging it. And then I finally was like, all right, we don't have time anymore. Like, this needs to be finished by tonight. Like, I just, I just, like, did it really quickly. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. That's good enough. Um, added those, you know, added those flies on there with some super glue, wrapped wrapped it up in the morning after I had like put some some linty oil on it and I just was like it's good it's good to go so then we go to install it in the actual show me and my dad and I just remember like first off in space claim I had already like asked if it was okay for me to um use this corner like that because I didn't really want to take anybody else's space because a corner in our um in our exhibition space could easily like run into somebody else's space it, it doesn't necessarily um you I mean it's just it's not conventional that people are using corners like that like the corner you know especially with it being so large so I asked and I remember them saying that it was fine so I just was like okay then I get there with my dad because he's my handy dandy helper he be helping me install we're like installing it we literally like screw screw some stuff into the wall I remember doing that putting it up and then the people were like, oh, this isn't secure enough. You're supposed to put this on D-rings. And we're like, how are we going to put it on D-rings if this painting like doesn't even have one of the edges? Because two of these edges are beveled and we don't have enough space to put these D-rings without it showing, like literally showing at the top. Then we have to do all this measurement to take it down. First off, take it down. Then one of the screws wouldn't come out the wall, which was being a problem. I was like, oh my gosh. And then... Um, I remember after we had taken all of that down, we put it back up and then somebody was like, have you gotten clearance to use this space? I was like, all right now, we didn't, we didn't put it up. I already was having all types of like struggles putting it up in the first place, took it down, put d on it, put it back up. And now you asking me if I have permission to use the space. Do you think I would be drilling into the wall if somebody didn't tell me I could do so? anyways but you know it worked out very well um and it most definitely is one of the pieces I'm most proud of just based off of um its completion my dedication to it it being a, tr a soul like concept piece that truly like did exactly what I wanted it to do and I'm just really happy that you guys appreciate it that makes my heart sing it makes it sing but um yeah that is I don't think we're alone from start to finish I'm supposed to be writing a short story for it have I done it yet not yet I haven't done it yet um and I honestly unless it's gonna go into a show soon I'm probably not gonna I'm trying wait I'm trying to not be a procrastinator and do things last minute but that's how I get stuff done it really is and I pushed out a lot of those short stories for those other paintings before like the exhibition that I had for them but this piece doesn't really have an exhibition because it's really hard to show like there's not a lot of spaces that can accommodate this piece to go around the corner as it's intended to do and um yeah so I guess until I can solidify a space to show it that short story will be a concept in itself. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just want to thank you guys for coming back, for supporting, um, for being so loving, for loving the arts. Um, you guys are great. Also, my puzzles are coming today. We're going to insert a video here. So, I most definitely have been waiting for a while, but my puzzles are finally here. It took forever, 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 but this is what I was talking about in the first video. I was like, oh, I have something to show you guys, and for the next video, they'll be here, and I was like, oh, right? No, they weren't even here for the next video, and Sasa not out, so I guess it's being inserted 
into this video, which is technically out of order. Anyways, puzzles, puzzles. It's 500 piece puzzle. Oh, that's gonna be backwards. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I don't know. But the puzzles are now here, and they are for sale. Fifty five dollars. My website and stuff. And um, I'm very happy that these puzzles are here. I wanted to make them because my family really likes puzzles. They were kind of asking me for puzzles, so I just was like, okay, we'll see what we can do and promote for Black History Month. But at this point, we're like halfway through. So, but that's okay. I am very happy to show you the puzzles. I'll link it. You guys can go on my website and purchase the puzzle. This website. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, 500 piece puzzle of when we speak. It'll come with this little sticker. You guys can do what you want with that. I didn't want to stick it on the puzzle because, like, you know, I don't know if you guys are going to be happy with that. So I just am giving it to you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm able to ship. Enjoy puzzles. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys um, enjoyed it. And I hope that, you know, if you enjoyed it enough and you didn't subscribe, you will. And that, you know, you'll come back and watch another video. Um, but yeah, love you guys. Thanks. And see you soon. Bye.